What have Imelda Marcos and Matt Marvel got in common? And to be honest, I've always been embarrassed to admit that I didn't know. It turns out, however, that the answer is a keen interest in footwear, as I think we've learnt this afternoon. I discovered this just the other day, when a visibly distressed Matthew took me to a location near Stowmarket and in a voice hoarse with emotion made a heartfelt request. Simon, look at my shoes. Will you look at them? I don't know what to say, really, about them. They, they, they say that, uh, that when, when you're summing up somebody's personality, look at the shoes mm -hmm. and you don't have to look any further. What somebody would say if they looked at your shoes and then judged your personality on the basis of that is that you enjoy running, you're untidy and you know how to tie up laces. I'm a BBC Radio Suffolk radio presenter. I don't think these are good enough. I meet members of the public. I wander around. I didn't realise you were so uh, so shoe-obsessed. Well, I, I think I need a Suffolk shoe. You're representing the county. Hmm. I, I think that's a good idea, Matthew. Because we're here at Coombs Tannery, and there's uh, Frank Harvey's uh, shoe repairs and shoe makers. Um, but before we go in there, Simon, mm -hmm. I think we should go to Wickham Market quickly. I like the idea that Wickham Market becomes... Wikipedia market. From now on, whenever we need a question answered, we go to Wikipedia market. The font of all knowledge. Yeah, it might be wrong. Just like Wikipedia. Exactly. <laughs> Wickham market, here we come. Do you think these shoes are respectable for a BBC radio presenter, or do you think I need new shoes? Being in a rural Suffolk, yes, yeah, so they're fine. I don't care what you have on. <laughs> What's your name? John. Well, I wouldn't wear those anywhere myself. No, no, I need something a bit more stylish, a bit more upmarket, maybe? Well, not necessarily upmarket, but a, a, a little bit more conventional, I think. OK, OK. Thank you very much. Do you think these, these trainers are suitable for a BBC radio presenter? Do you think I should upgrade a little bit? Possibly, yes. What, what should I go for? Could maybe a nice pair of leather shoes or something? Or Well, no, not if you're walking around car parks and the like. Mm -hmm. I mean, casual is fine. Oh, OK, OK. Casual is fine. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. What's your name? <laughs> Lynn. Thank you much, Lynn. OK, you're welcome. Well, they weren't very helpful, were they? Well, they knew what they liked and what they didn't. So there's lots in that. You've got the Wikipedia. I like Wikipedia market. That's a strong idea. I think so, and I think we may run with that. Yeah, I'll go back there. Whenever we want anything answered, go to Wikipedia Market. There, you may remember we left Matthew, who's Hello. behind there he is behind me, in emotional agony as he realised that his shoes needed replacing. Now, after getting some good advice from the people of Wickham Market, we set off to Coombs Tannery near Stowe Market, home of Frank Harvey's bespoke shoe manufacturers and repairers. Matt wanted to take his sports shoes to the very top, so when we arrived, he demanded to speak to the manager, Garth Ward, who had his own thoughts on the state of Matt's footwear. Well, I wouldn't call them shoes, I'd call them trainers. Shoes are good for your feet. I don't personally think trainers are. So what should I be looking for if I want a new pair of shoes? I think 100% uh, leather right. is absolutely crucial. That's obviously, you know, it's got to be a great start. What can I get from you that would be suitable for all occasions? Something like I'd use a trainer for, I'd use it for, you know, wearing it every day. Um, well, I mean, I would personally say a pair of handmade shoes. I mean, you can't be a pair of handmade shoes. And how much are we looking at for that? Um, they're sort of five or six hundred pounds a pair. Whoa. But, you know, when you think that, uh, you know, they will last you an extremely long time, people have got shoes going 15, 20, 25 years or more, so... What's the most sort of... I mean, do you, do you get unusual requests, unusual foot rare requests? We have done, yeah. <laughs> run, run, yeah. A few, run a few by me if you can. Um, I've made a pair of thigh-length boots before. Uh, Ooh la la. Yeah, for a young lady, you know, she was going on a balloon flight for leaving her wedding reception, and she wanted those specially made for that, so... You wouldn't we think that's, that's traditionally balloon, balloon wear, would you? No, no, I would agree with that. <laughs> but, you know, well, we're not here to question. Do, you, do flip flops make you angry? Uh, I, uh, no. Yeah, I think he's lying. I, I, think, I think so. I think that's, that's a matter. It, it gets the uh, it gets the red mist possibly when he, when he sees a sees the flip flops. But we won't we won't delve too deeply into that. Are you here to buy to buy an expensive pair of shoes? No, sadly I'm not. No, but I have been. Um, the reason I came was I, it was an interesting discovery to come here because I had bought some rather nice brown suede boots a couple of years ago, and I always have a problem of them fitting my calf, not my thigh. We basically pinned them to fit my leg and that was you know three or four years ago I think now and they're still going strong and they just fit absolutely perfectly. Now the reason I've come is I've got a, a bag issue and a piece of hide that I want attached to this here so I brought it along to see if you could help out. 
So can you help out? Um, yes, I would have thought we could, yeah. So you'll probably come back in a couple of weeks and pick that up? Yes, I will. That'd be lovely. It's revamped my bag completely. It needs a bit of polish, but other than that, it'll be fine. <laughs> and your name is? Sonia Mermigan. So could we have a look around your factory? Yes, you can, yeah. So we're walking into the uh, industrial unit. Smell of leather. It's like when you open up a shoe box, isn't it? But then it would be because we are indeed surrounded by shoes. In a box? Of, of sorts, yes. Yeah, I think currently we've got somewhere in the region of 400 odd pairs of shoes in at the moment for repair. You've been in this business for, for quite some time. Um, how, how long has the, the company been going? Uh, the company's been running, originally started in the early 1870s. Uh, quite a while. I didn't personally start it, but... But as a relation? Yes, uh, as my great-great-grandfather. And have you always been, because this is uh, the Coombs Tannery, Tannery is leather, have you always been here? Uh, no, we've been here about four and a half years. Uh, we have moved around Stone Market uh, in various places, uh, probably for the last 15 years, uh, in the first instance because the repair trade was taking quite a dive throughout the UK that we had to relocate to smaller premises, which made financial sense. Um, but then, since then, we've been getting better, bigger, stronger. And you're aiming at a kind of uh, the quality end of the market, aren't you? Yes, definitely the quality end of the market. Um, we don't operate like some of the high street chains do. Mm. You know, we don't do keys, we don't engrave trophies or anything like that. Um, we just purely do high quality shoe repairs. Do, do you have a favourite shoe to make and or wear? I do actually prefer to wear my own rather than anybody else's because I obviously specifically make them for myself. And I do find those the most comfortable shoes. So you've made that, the pair you're wearing right now is... Yes, as you've, a pair of handmade, yeah. I was trying to think how my lifestyle would, would affect my, my footwear, and I just spend a lot of time in front of a computer writing, so I'm, I don't walk around the house a lot. Slippers. Do you make slippers? Um, no. <laughs> uh, but we, we have done, we have made a few pair of what we call house shoes, which is the old traditional style slipper. That's what you need. It's, uh, it's not what you would probably find a slipper in Marks and Spencers or somewhere like that nowadays, but... Um, in a bit of a grown-up version of the ones I had as a kid with an embossed... Um, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> no, it was... Uh, what's his name? I was going Billy Bremner. That's slightly before my time. Mullet. I can't remember his name now. Kevin Keegan. Kevin Keegan. You're just going to edit it all together, aren't you? Yeah, Kevin Keegan montage. Kevin Keegan. So what have we learned? We've learned that I should get out of these shoes, really, and, and buy some handmade ones at some point. That are fit for purpose, that fit with your lifestyle. I might have to come back and purchase a pair. Yeah, please do. Matt and Simon on BBC Radio Suffolk. If you enjoy wearing thigh-high boots, if you're young, if you're old, get in contact with us. <laughs> Especially if you, after your wedding, if you got on a hot air balloon. Exactly, exactly. It's, it's, just make sure they're bespoke. Yeah.